You are now listening to MJH Motivate Studios. You can find the podcast on Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, and you can discover the show on YouTube. Subscribe and hit the bell. Welcome back to the channel. It has been a great time just stepping away from everything and um, allowing myself to reevaluate where I am now and where it and where God has brought me from. And last year, uh, we did cleaning season. And the whole purpose of cleaning season, at least for myself, and I hope for you all uh, as well, it was a period of allowing myself to be purged by the convictions that God was placing in my life. And um, allowing God to be that uh, um, that husband man, the the uh, the gardener tilling the ground to, to soften my heart so I can be um, a sponge, so to speak, soaking in what He was pouring into me. And that has been the case as I progress throughout the year. And um, in the month of December. I took time for myself just reflecting on everything that has happened and where God has uh, brought me from. And I was in a place of just surrender. And it's a beautiful thing. And it, it, it's, it's beautiful when you allow yourself to just be present, right? To allow yourself to be silent while God is speaking. And during that time, God gave me the word for the year for this year. And the word for the year is foundation. Nothing can be built if there's not a foundation that is built. And sometimes we are so quick to uh, cling on to foundations that have already been built. I'm not just talking about uh, physical buildings, but I'm talking about dreams visions, uh, goals that are being put forth. And like myself, uh, a lot of times I was like, okay, God, I see what you're doing, but I'm going to cling on to what you told somebody else to do. And I never wanted to take it for myself, to take that ownership. It was like, hey, God is telling me I can do this, right? Like, I can build this new foundation, I can be the lead person. I can uh, be the catalyst of what he is starting in a new chapter, right? In a new area. But I had to go through a life to get there, to get to that confidence. To get to that confidence stage in my life. And today, as we're talking about foundation, we're starting at the tip top of it, right? Where you have to... Um, first plot out the land you have to take that first step and trust God and from the book of Genesis chapter 12 I'm reading the NIV version New International Version and it's talking about the call of Abram so we all know him as Father Abraham you know has many sons and many sons have Father Abraham I am one of them so are you so let's just praise the Lord Hey, if you grew up in Sunday school and all that, you know the song. So I ain't just saying all of it. You know the song. Right foot on, yeah, you know all of it. But with this, his name was not Abraham at first. It was Abram. And later on when um, God called him and he took that step, God he he added his name to a to Abram's name, and that's powerful in a sense where God is calling us to Him, right? We're His His sons and daughters, and when He does that, He changes not just our name, but He changes our identity. He changes our drive, our focus, and no longer are we just seeing life half empty. Like we can't. We, we we don't see the full treasures of uh like of 
what God has for us yet because we're still living in this in the earthly realm uh, and we're still in these uh, in these temporal uh, temples uh, in our bodies but God is showing us through just living uh, within us how we can bring his kingdom to the kingdom that is preparing for the kingdom to come and from this chapter it reads the Lord has say, said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation, and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse you. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. In the Old Testament, at least when I, I, when I have read the Old Testament, I was always amazed with how these men and women believed in what God was saying. Because look, Jesus was not on the scene yet, right? So... A lot of what they were believing, they they couldn't, it was nothing for them to see. And, yeah, we have that now, but even then, I feel like it was a little, it was harder. But like, with Abraham, somebody, t uh, with Abraham, um, with him being destructed, go from your country. So, you mean, everything that I have, the livestock, like, the fortune, everything that I have... I'm going to leave because you said I will make you into a great nation. So it's like, he had, a, he had a choice. Do I believe in what God is telling me to do? Or do I cling on to my old foundation? Like, hey, I got stable ground right now. I got stable ground right now. Or do you agree with the real estate agent saying, hey, but this town over here, like, you can do so much more like your capital like your uh investments would be so much uh stronger and more secure if you trust in this and going on chapter verse 4 it says so abram went as the lord had told him and lot went with him abram was 75 years old when he set out from haran he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. It's crazy because he's going from a place of familiar familiarity to the land of Canaan. And it's like, man, like, he's not from there. God is sending him there. And he. And he is calling us to do the same. He's sending you to new places. It might not be a new land, but it can be a new job. It can be a new relationship, a new friendship, where he is sending you into unfamiliar territories. But the good thing is, God will not send you there without first preparing the new soil for you. Without first preparing the hearts and minds of those that you're going to be interacting with. And a lot of times we, in our heads, we try to kind of like calculate everything. Like, hey, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And you're like, I'm not going to go there because that, that's not me. So, like, we become like Jonah. And we always say, like, hey, Jonah should have did this. We went to Nineveh. Like, when in our lives has, has God told us to do something and we refuse? Yeah, we're Jonah. You're Jonah. I'm Jonah. But, <laughs> we got to, you know, challenge ourselves to be like Abram. And to move without a lot of direction. Like, God, he will tell you what to do, but he won't tell you everything. You know, it's like in school. Like, you're learning, but you're not going to learn everything in one sitting. No, you have to apply the knowledge that you're 
that you are gaining. Aaron traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham, I mean to Abram, and said, To your offspring. So this, this is after he took that step. God is revealing more because he's like, Hey, I have your heart. I'm going to give you more of the promise that I have in store for you. And for us, uh, something to be inspired by is that God has everything for you. But when you're when you are ready to receive it, when you are ready and show yourself approved that you can handle what He has given to you, then He will give you the next chapter. I will give this land. So He built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared. To him. From there, he ran on toward the hills of the hills east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There, he built an altar altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. And what is also important when we're building these foundations, when God is sending us out to uh, these different lands, to these different um, areas in our lives that we are not really familiar with, uh, these uncharted uh, uh, areas, it is important for us to make room for God, to not forget. Like with Abram, when he got to the new land, he was like, I'm going to pay homage I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay homage and show respect to God. Like, you brought me out of this even when I didn't know, fully know what was going on, but you blessed my life. So I'm going to praise your name. And a lot of times we hold on to our testimonies. Like, when God brought us through something, we were like, hey, but God, but God did this. And yes, that is true. But a lot of times we do not share our testimony. Uh, we forget the power in them, or we try to, uh, you know, put on a new act. Of like, oh man, like, God brought me through all of this. But we, we fail to share our testimony to those that are around us, right? And we feel like, uh, at least for myself, we can feel like our testimonies are making us weak and it's like showing like our sinful nature that is already there or that people are going to judge us. It's like, man, like, let them judge. Like, let them judge. If, if God is telling you to do something, to share something, it's going to hit the minds and hearts of those that are supposed to uh, be intended for. And those that are offended, hopefully that offense becomes... Hopefully that offense becomes um, conviction, in healthy conviction. And in the Old Testament, God, a lot of times, uh, he was instructing people to build his temple. And like with David, uh, he was saying that he never had a home. Like, he was, he was going everywhere with the Israelites and all the children, but like he never had a solid home. And David wasn't supposed to build the, build the temple. He had a lot of issues in his life that uh, led him not, like, he was still after God's heart, but, like, he wasn't supposed to build the temple. But David's son, Solomon, built the tem temple for God. And God is a God of excellence. Like, it's beautiful. Like, if you, man, just read the Old Testament. Like, these buildings, it will be uh, for chapters and chapters. At times it sounds boring, but like when you really read it and take it in, it's so interesting. Uh, it's so detailed. The temples, like the the like the brick that they use, like everything they use is powerful, and it's so beautiful because in the middle is the altar, and it's like the holy of holies, and that's where God. That, that's where God was, the presence of God. But now that Jesus, you know, died on our behalf and rose again, 
for our salvation, we are those temples, right? In the Holy of Holies, when we hold on and we hold on to uh, Jesus' words, the wisdom that is built in the Bible, God is, he's, <laughs> you know, he's in the inner, uh, like we have that access to the inner parts. Usually the high priests, like the Levites, uh, uh, Aaron and his sons, like that tribe, like they they had, they were the only ones to go, that were allowed to go into the Holy of Holies, the center part of the temple. But now we have that access. So today, as we begin to build our foundation, trust God. And later on, as the weeks go on, the months go on, I'm not going to do as many posts. Cause I feel like it's good for us just to to get what God has given us in these moments and then to move forward. And I don't want to give too much uh, information in one sitting and because I, I want you guys to take it in. And uh, in, in the weeks to follow, uh, when these like two to three posts a month, I'm going to invite guests onto the show, and uh, those segments are going to be called Build Your Church. And with that, yes, the church is a physical building, but it's also spiritual. And as we're talking about different things, we can build these foundations together, and we can learn life, like from life stories from each other as well. So... Hey, welcome back to MJH Motivate Studios. And uh, until next time, peace.